guys, welcome back. I'm Top Black Mirror Sinjin Drummer. And pretty much today, I'm actually doing some studio work over at uh, Y Road Studios. So, uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of filming and a little bit of the experience of a session drummer. And, like, give you my insights, my viewpoints, and what my thought process is during these things. Because it could be tedious sometimes. Because uh, you got to know what they actually want a little bit. So, um, stay in tune a little bit. So my main attempt for this video was to actually make it a vlog. Now the reason why I kind of didn't do that was because I was getting paid to do uh, session work, uh, tracking drums. Now I wasn't being paid to make uh, a vlog. I was actually paid to do the session work. So that's why I kind of did not do that at all. I didn't do a vlog because of that situation. But I will tell you my experience with uh, recording, uh, my first time recording at uh, Y Road Studios and uh, show you like uh, some tips and tricks of like what I'm doing uh, over there with uh, recording uh, wise tracking drums now uh, When we first uh, got in it was really nice uh, interior. Uh, it was really professional really uh, and it was because Beyonce recorded there uh, Whale uh, Jerry Seinfeld. There's a lot of great uh, acts that perform there not just musical acts uh, But also TV shows you know one of my favorite and uh, my dad's favorite uh, TV show glow they did audio stuff over there. Um, maybe they did mixing and mastering or the just recording uh, certain tracks or sound effects. Um, I'm not too sure, but they did a little bit of, um, 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 they worked uh, with that studio before. And so it's really nice and it's quite an honor to uh, actually record drums in that uh, studio. It was really awesome. So when we first got in, it was really nice interior wise. And it's one of the nicest studios I've ever recorded at uh, or played drums in. And pretty much when we first got there, we made sure that everything uh, was getting set up. So you always want to make sure that um, I pretty much uh, chose what drums that I wanted to record with. And so I decided that since they had a vintage Gretsch drum set, I was like, okay, let's use that and uh, try to figure out what snare, what cymbals to use. And we pretty much mix and match and figure out what sounds best for a song. And that's pretty much one of the useful tips is figure out like what does the music need and so you want to make a checklist of like being prepared you know basically so you want to be prepared and make sure that you got everything you know what the song needs and what the song does not need you know so I pretty much set it up to where that uh, this is what the drum set looked like uh, finished you know so make sure that everything's set up and then the eye engineers are pretty much uh, going to make sure that um, the mics are placed right it's going to sound good and so yeah so pretty much everything has to be set up and my friend Brian you know he was uh, making sure he got it set up too making sure um, Brian you excited nope no you're not but thank you he's got his pedal board set up make sure everything's right and also uh, which amp that you want to use uh, too so we were doing this uh, for music uh, for sad people, and it was a tune called uh, Big Loud. Now, before I got there, I made sure I had my cymbals. I made sure that I knew the music. I printed it out. And um, during that session work, I also asked, uh, I was curious about, um, should I play it note by note, or should I play it um, um, creatively and all that? Uh, and so they were like, yeah, you don't have to play it note by note, but I want you to play the form. I was like, yeah, I can do that. I know that. I can do that. You know, so I got some cool ideas. So we pretty much got everything uh, done. Uh, the drums um, was all set up. Drums were set up. Guitar was set up. And that's all we needed to do. So uh, the cool thing about uh, what happened was drums were set up. Uh, they actually wanted to make sure that the drums were good. So I kind of uh, did my thing where it was like, bop, bop. But they are like, yeah, just play the drums. Uh, as you uh, as you would do and it's like I don't think that's what you want but okay I'll do that and so what I kind of did was uh, since they were trying to figure out gain staging for the drums making sure everything's uh, good it's not clipping too much and I was like playing much playing it like this I got a video of me uh, just doing the sound check uh, I believe I did you know so we'll see you know so I'm pretty much uh, doing this little type of thing uh, drum beat uh, I'm messing around with all the other drums, making sure I'm playing everything, but making sure it makes musical, musical sense because I definitely know what the audio engineers are doing uh, because I have a little bit of that, not, not that experience, 
but I know what they go through and I know what they want. So I'm doing this type of stuff where I'm playing a drum beat and I'm messing around with maybe hi-hat grooves, tom grooves, tribal grooves, uh, maybe something that is involving a little bit more crash and ride. Uh, I'm doing that type of stuff. And then later they're asking me, okay, yeah, I mess around with the toms a little bit. And so I'm like, okay, all right, cool, I can do that. And so feeling the groove, making sure that everything's good. And so after that, uh, pretty much so we're just uh, trying to figure out it's like uh, how should we record it uh, and so we had headphones on uh, sometimes some people want to click track some people don't uh, I wanted to click track and we had a little bit of the actual demo that um, um, they prepared uh, and so we were just uh, recording over that uh, demo and so for me um, uh, I thought we were recording right then and then they're like okay are you all ready to go it's like I, I thought we were going. In the <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were going. <laughs> so, so it was a really cool um, little thing that we had happen. So after that, uh, we pretty much me and my friend Brian, we were pretty much recording um, uh, together. You know, we were both in the room, we were recording, and uh, it took, only took me two or three takes. And they're like, "Okay, we pretty much Todd. I think we. Uh, I think that's a really excellent take, guy. I think you're done." I was like. Oh, I don't want. I want to keep going. You know, uh, they were like, "Well, uh, we might have you later." You know, so I was hanging out, hang out in the control room, and so Brian was still doing his thing, uh, making sure uh, all the stuff was um, really well done. You know, uh, making sure that the riffs are good. Uh, but also, he did bass, so he tracked the bass a little bit as well. Um, so he was uh, doing his thing. There's a little bit of uh, video of him. Uh, I, I recorded a little video of him uh, just uh, playing a little bit. You know, just a good idea of what's uh, going on. Now, that is the mindset. Now, here are some things, uh, some tips uh, whenever uh, recording in the studio. You do not want to waste the client's time. You do not want to do that because time's money. And I've had studio experience before. I've also uh, um, paid for rehearsal t uh, studio time. And I know how precious it is. There was this one time I was doing a jazz group, and I'm not calling names out, but there was this one time I was uh, uh, paid for studio time, and the piano player uh, was like, oh, let me do that take one more time, and all that, and I was like, bro, bro you're the best piano player uh, over here. Why are you doing this? And like, you're wasting my time, you're wasting my money. And like, you should already have this thing. Do not experiment. You're wasting my time and money. And so it was a waste of time and money because we only did four songs for that four hours. We should have been boom, 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 boom. Because we're, we're all jazz musicians. We should know our instruments. And, he was a part, and the crazy thing was he was the top uh, piano player over at Texas State University, to my opinion. You know, he was the top. And he just uh, kept like, oh, let me, uh, I don't like that. Take. Uh, let me do it one more time. It was like, bro, I'm a drummer. That was spot on and all that. I don't want to do that again. We need to keep going and see what kind of songs we have, good ones and bad ones and all that. So waste of time and money, yeah, for me, even though it was like like maybe $40 for four hours, which is not bad price and all that. So, so that was a waste of time and money, and I know how precious that is. Now, that's the biggest thing, uh, biggest advice I have. Now, also, you want to prepare um, you want to prepare as much as possible before the session because you want to make sure that you have everything lined up. You want to be prepared because if you're not prepared, then you're going to waste the client's time. And it's like, okay, why are you not prepared? Why are you showing up uh, to a paid gig with nothing prepared? Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to pay you if uh, you're just fiddling around and experimenting. You should already have all that stuff done. So. That's the thing is you want to be prepared as possible. So before the actual gig, this is what I did, is um, I had the audio track. And so I just messed around with the audio track. I messed around with the reference of like what they were going for. And so you want to mess around with that for a, a while and all that until it's like you're so sick and tired of it. You know? But you want to give a great emotional performance with it too. I also had the sheet music. And so the sheet music, it's important to read because mo you have no clue what kind of recording session uh, it will be, whether if it's a rock one or just commercial 
uh, music where they have sheet music for you and they want you to either read note by note or use that as a reference to read the form of the track. Now, if it's a hip hop thing, sometimes uh, they don't. Some, uh, sometimes they don't even know how to write music. Sometimes they do. So sometimes they're like, okay, give me a groove that's uh, like a Chris, uh, Chris Daddy Dave type of feel. And I'm like, okay, I know who that is, so I know what you want. And I'm like, but sometimes they're like, yeah, play something like uh, from Tony Roaster Jr. And I'm like, uh, I don't know who that is. If you don't know who it is, they're probably going to fire you and all that. They want, they can't burn any time and all that. So you have to know, you have to know your stuff. And, all that. and that's the thing is, if you've been doing music, if you dedicated it for, if, you, if you're really into music, and you've been doing this for a long time. For me, I've been doing this for 12 years, um, just for music in general. Uh, I've been doing music for 12 years, and I know my stuff and all. And if you do, you should have no problem with recording. And if you know a lot of great drummers, uh, and you know what their style is, and someone says, hey, can you play this uh, so, uh, so-and-so type beat? And it was like, okay, yeah, I could do that without any sheet music. So you have to do stuff on the spot because time's money. And that's just the art of session um, musicians is that you have to know your stuff and all. And I'm making it sound like it's a uh, fight or flight mode. Really, it's not. Uh, if you know your stuff, like you don't have to worry about it. But if you're like barely hanging in there, you've been doing it for five years, uh, just music in general, you're not ready for session work quite yet. You need to do 10 plus years of music and then doing session work. That's my opinion. That's why I've, that's why I've been through and all because in 10 years, you know your craft. And all. So that's my opinion. You want to be prepared, uh, prepared as best as possible. And all that's the biggest advice I have for that. So you always want to bring your gear. And all that first communication is important, which is what do I need to bring? What do I not need to bring? So they already have a drum set. They already had cymbals, but I'm like, I better bring my cymbals just in case it's not the greatest. And so I brought uh, my. Uh, Pretty much uh, my symbols and all that. So I brought my 60s uh, ride symbol. Uh, I brought my uh, hi hat, uh, the 70s hi hat, and one of my I used one of my crashes. I only used one of their. Um, I believe it was a 16 inch uh, vintage Zildjian uh, crash, which I really love the vintage uh, gear Zildjian has. It's so rich uh, and warm uh, type of sounds. So, and that's what the music needed. And all. So that's what I was using during uh, that session was uh, a mixture of my cymbals and one of theirs, but I used um, their drum set because I really love Gretsch and I love the sound that uh, the drum set was producing. So the only situation that I had uh, that kind of happened to what I was concerned about was the bass drum. So the bass drum, not the front head where there's a hole in it, but where I'm hitting the head with my beater there was a fracture in um, in the head. So I was a little concerned about it, but when I was hitting it, I was like, yeah, that fracture's going nowhere and all that. So it's good. I could go through the recording session with that head, the little tiny fracture, and no one even, no one's even going to notice. You know, it wasn't doing that little, little uh, fraction type of sound where you're going to hear a buzz. It didn't even do that. I was just very surprised it didn't. So I didn't really worry about that. You want to think as many situations in your head as possible of how it's going to go. And and hopefully you make it through the day, which I did actually. I, uh, it was a really fun experience. Uh, it was like no pressure, but you want to make sure that you get the job done. And so I got the job done and all that. It only took me about two or three takes and I was pretty much finished. I could have gone home and all that, but you always want to stay there until the end of the session because you never know if they, um, uh, they catch something within the audio and they're like, oh no, there's a... Um, uh, there's a little clipping and all that. We need to try that again and all that. Um, uh, they always want to try something else. So if you get it done early, you're still you're still there. Um, the studios still uh, still have an hour left within for the studio use, and you're like, okay, I need to. Um, we need to try some of the other things because uh, we got still more time and all that. So whenever someone says they have four hours for a recording session, really. It could be three and a half, or it could be just your three hours of studio time, because you have you might have three hours of actually setting up. So if it's like from four to eight, you have to get there at four, because that's what you schedule for. Uh, Thirty minutes of that would be setting it up. Uh, the three hours would be actually uh, recording 
uh, the actual song, whether if it's just you or other um, uh, musicians, and then the last 30 minutes is tearing down. And so you want to make sure you're like in there right in fourth, and then you finish at eight. And it's not like where you're coming to the gig where uh, a live gig where you're at the venue, you want to be there early, set up, and then right at that time, that's when you perform. And then when you're done, you tear down and it's like, okay, it's not like that. Studio work is different than live performances where you have to start at seven or 15 minutes later or you end right there or 15 minutes later. It's so different uh, than a live performance. So the recording is totally different, you know. So um, that's the big thing about that. Now, that's pretty much all the stuff I can think about uh, with this um, band uh, recordings, you know. So it's one of the most rewarding experiences. So if this is your first time ever doing uh, what you're going to do your first time doing a recording session work, these are really helpful tips. So don't waste the, um, uh, the client's uh, time. Make sure you're really prepared. Make sure you uh, know what the music wants, and what, what the music needs, you know, uh, and yeah, and just have fun. You know, uh, this is a lot of great uh, advice I've given you, and there and there's a lot of audio examples of like what I've been playing, and yeah, so a lot of great experiences. And there may be some things I've left out, like um, like the mindset of an audio engineer. Like there are a couple points uh, in the song where I actually dipped it down because I knew the audio engineer uh, would have to add automation, so I did it for him on the spot with uh, me playing quieter. So you always want to add those dynamic shapes in the music. So that's some of the extra stuff. You know? So hopefully you found this uh, video very useful and all that. Uh, so don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and uh, make sure you follow uh, uh, Music for Sad People and all that. Uh, their song might come out uh, soon, uh, which is a uh, big loud. And so, yeah, check it out when it comes out, and I'll leave the link in the description below. And, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye!